Is it just me, or is it easier to identify behaviors that represent craving and clinging? What I really mean is, is it easier to identify craving and clinging as opposed to identifying instances of aversion? Or am I just more inclined toward clinging and craving? Hi, it's Margaret Maloney, and welcome to season three of the Death Dhamma podcast. I'm so glad you're here. And I'm so appreciative that you are part of my community. And yet, I seek not to be attached to the idea of the podcast or even to the idea of our community. And that's our topic this season, attachment, clinging and aversion. What happens when we really want something? What happens when we really don't want something? And what does it do to our suffering and dissatisfaction? Let's dive in and find out a little bit more with today's episode. I looked around the room and there I saw him. Someone I had once worked with. A person who I felt had been purposefully difficult and disrespectful. I found myself thinking, ugh, why is he here? And my immediate thoughts were not friendly or positive. Now I understand this was me experiencing aversion. In the previous episode, or Season 3, Episode 7, Why Anger and Aversion Might Not Be So Different, we considered the teachings on aversion and recognized that aversion, or the desire to get rid of something, is anger, specifically because aversion involves pushing something away. And that act of pushing something away is not really gentle, like it's not gently setting something aside, it's more aggressive. Fair enough. I know that my first thoughts at seeing this former colleague fell into the category of pushing something away aggressively. I really wished he was not at the same event with me. And with those thoughts came other forms of anger, because I recalled why I was not happy to see him, and why I thought that he had been purposely difficult and disrespectful. Clearly, I was hanging on to some hard feelings. That is clinging and aversion. What benefit do I get from harboring hard feelings? And how does it help me to wish that he would go away? You already know the answer. There's no benefit to me creating a situation where I'm the victim and he is the villain. This is a good point to stop and reflect on this situation. To create a journal entry because that's what we're doing this season, right? We are journaling on clinging and attachment, craving and aversion. So first, what happened? Well, I saw this former colleague across the room. Okay, what was the result? Really wishing that he was not here, followed by remembering hard feelings toward him, followed by recalling some of the situations that led me to have those hard feelings. And then recalling those situations was like replaying an old movie. I could see those scenarios in my mind's eye. I could hear the discussion and those old feelings resurfaced. I bet you know what I'm talking about. So for some of us, when it doesn't happen, you know, like live across the room from someone, it might happen at night when you're trying to go to sleep and you keep replaying something over and over in your head. Yes, it was like that. Okay. And those old feelings came with some physical side effects. Not dramatically, but I know I felt like my stomach. I felt uneasy at having to see him or not having to see him, right? At seeing him to use fair language, more neutral. And a tightening in my throat. That describes the situation and how I was experiencing it. Now, let's look at the source of my aversion. I felt aversion because when this person and I worked together, he had treated me disrespectfully. Really, Margaret? Is this all his fault? Ow! Time for a reality check. This is a good opportunity to revisit some of the teachings on aversion. 
Remember this passage from the Irivutaka? This was said by the Blessed One, said by the Arhant. So I have heard. There are these three inside stains. Which three? Greed is an inside stain. Inside enemy, inside foe, inside murderer, inside adversary. Aversion is an inside stain. And then, of course, it goes on, you know, inside enemy, inside foe, inside murderer, inside adversary. So, inside. Oh, snap. This aversion is coming from within me. I am doing this. I own this. I am the source of this aversion. I can understand that something about this encounter with this person has helped aversion arise. But I was also seeing that blaming him for my aversion is not the right view. It might feel easier in that moment, but it's unskillful. Sure, make all of this his fault, hang on to the anger, not helpful, right? Not helpful. And it doesn't matter to him. He doesn't know, but I'm not helping myself in this situation. And by the way, this is not me saying that it is acceptable to treat people poorly. So I'm not saying like, Hey, go ahead, everyone treat other people badly because it's on them to deal with it. I'm not saying that. If he indeed purposefully treated me in a hostile manner, that's for him and for his self-reflection. My work here is to consider why I took his behavior personally, why it was still bothering me. That's all inward work. That's me. I need to clean up my inside stain. Remember another part of this same passage, aversion causes harm. Aversion provokes the mind. People don't realize it as a danger born from within. A person, when aversive, doesn't know his own welfare. When aversive, doesn't see Dhamma. Overcome with aversion, he's in the dark, blind. If I let this encounter be all about the hard feelings and the resentment, I'm in the dark and I'm blind. And if I let that aversion take over in this situation, I could behave really badly. I could act out on the hard feelings I have towards him with rude behavior. I could, you know, confront him and spew out some angry words. And by the way, in this situation, this person, I don't think really remembered me. That's what he said. I'm going to take that as the truth, whether it is or it isn't. And so imagine I let my aversion take over and I approached him and I spewed out all my anger and all my accusations of his bad behavior to what end, right? So yes, it's up to me to examine my aversion, the true source of it, the true source of the aversion and seek to drop it. What was it about those experiences with this person that provoked me? And I know there was a specific feeling of being discounted, of not being treated as significant to the work that we were completing. And also a feeling of resentment toward our other colleagues who were present and didn't speak up on my behalf, who I envisioned as just sitting there and watching this person behaving rudely and just pretending that it wasn't happening like not, and I'll use this phrase because this is what I thought, not coming to my defense when this person spoke over me or pretended that I was not in the room. Actually, now when I recall so much of his behavior, it would be kind of funny if I learned that he was actually hard of hearing and really did not know that I was speaking, except that he seemed to hear others quite well. Was it the pitch of my voice? Maybe. But it would be kind of funny. And if that were true, and I had approached him and, you know, said something to him, and then he looked at me and said, Oh, I I didn't know you were speaking. I can't hear certain frequencies. Wow, that would really be 
embarrassing and a, a, an interesting scenario for where my aversion took me. Now, I didn't do that. Again, I didn't approach him with anger. I don't really think he was hard of hearing. That's, But who knows, right? We don't know. What I'm left with is that because of the expectations I had around who I was in that work scenario and how I thought I should, there's that should word, be treated in that work scenario by him and others, his behavior did not measure up to what I had created for myself or how I perceived my role and how I expected or perceived that people should treat me in that role as one of the leaders of the group and the person facilitating the work sessions. My disappointment in others who I felt passively watched this person disrespect me, well, that could be a craving to want to be recognized by them or a craving for them to see the situation that I did, right? A desire to be seen in a certain way, a desire for others to behave in a way that I thought they should behave. Again, this is not me excusing the behavior of others. He behaved how he behaved. He knows his intentions. That is for him. But this creation of a professional self who should, again, there's that should thing, that expectation, that building up of a self should be treated in a certain way, perceived a certain way. That was all my own dealings with my inside stain of aversion because through craving to have this self and then clinging to this view of this professional self, I grew an aversion toward being treated in a way that violated my expectations of the professional self that I built. There's nothing wrong with, in certain scenarios, having a role and working to fulfill that role. Again, what I'm pointing out is the place of my attachment in or to that role and how my attachment to that role and expectations of others helped create this scenario where now here I was with aversion rising in me, right? Now what? Well, remember, put out the fire of aversion with goodwill. So instead of feeling embarrassed or ashamed that I wanted to be treated in a certain way, you know, in the way that I felt was befitting my professional status, I can extend myself some loving can kindness. I can wish goodwill toward my former colleague and to myself and others should future similar situations arise. I would love to hear from you, your thoughts, your suggestions, your own stories about attachment. So follow this link. I'm going to read it to you in a minute here to leave me a 90 second message with your ideas and suggestions. You can go to HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash www.speakpipe.com forward slash death underscore Dhamma underscore podcast. I suppose you could also just use your favorite search engine to say speak pipe death Dhamma podcast. And there you can record an audio message for me and be sure to come over to margaretmaloney.com. That's M A R G A R E T M E L O N I.com and join the community. You've been listening to the death Dhamma podcast with your host, Margaret Maloney. Thank you so much for being here. Come find me on margaretmaloney.com, M-A-R-G-A-R-E-T-M-E-L-O-N-I.com. And until we meet again, may you be well, may you be happy, may you be at ease, and may you be free from suffering. Bye for now.